this tutorial is one that shows you how to process an image multiple times um, and then use masks to um, create something which has um, a different um, light temperature between the foreground, the middle ground and the background and different exposures it allows you to paint through. So it's really kind of a masking workout but it'll show you what you can do creatively with your images in post-production. So this image is opened in Camera Raw. It is a raw file, a CRW file. Right now I want to open it, um, but I want to expose it just for the sky. It's only the sky that I'm interested in. So I'm going to lower my exposure a little bit by around about a stop. So that would be minus one. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast in there. And... I want to add a little bit of clarity. I'm not worried about what's happening down here. I'm really just looking at the sky. In terms of the light temperature, it actually looks pretty good right now. Um, I don't think that I need to change too much, but I am gonna add um, a little bit of vibrance in here to bring out some of the blues. And I could easily go to HSL grayscale, increase the saturation just to the blue tones, but um, by going into the blues here, and this would allow me to just increase the blue. In fact, I might do that um, just a little bit. But um, mostly I want to do it here with the vibrance setting. So I'm just going to dial that back a bit because I've increased it um, on the hue saturation luminance panel. Okay, I'm now going to go ahead and open this image. So it's opened in Photoshop, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to save this. Um, the place is Zion National Park, so I'm going to call it Zion. And save it as a PSD file, because I am going to be adding in um, multiple layers on here, so I want it as a PSD. So I'm now going to reopen my image. This is in Bridge. Um, I just double click to reopen it. I'm going to set it back to the camera raw default. So this was my original image. Now I'm looking at the mountains. And, you know, I don't really want to change the exposure too much on these. In fact, I'll probably leave it um, at zero. Uh, to set any of these back to zero, you can just double click on them. But I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit. Highlights allows you to recover the highlights. So I can pull that back and you'll notice that it brings in the tonality in the mountains. Likewise, whites will do the same thing. Um, but really, for this one, I just want to do the highlights. And again, I want to increase the clarity. And this time I'm going to go to the HSL grayscale panel. I'm in saturation, not in hue. Um, I just want to push um, the reds and the oranges. So these are the colors that are in the mountains right now. Again, I'm not really looking at the foreground. And now I can open the image. And I'm really just going to do a select all, copy and paste. I could drag the layer on top, but copy and paste is just as quick. So now I have two layers, one with the sky on there and the next one with the background. Um, oh, sorry, the background has the sky layer on it and then this one has how I want the mountains to look. Before I process again, I'm actually just going to bring in the sky. So the first thing I want to do is add a layer mask to it. I'm going to add a reveal all layer mask, so I'm just really going to be pulling in details into the sky. I'm going to use my brush on here, making um, a bigger brush size. And I'm going to start off with um, a slightly lower opacity. I've actually just gone into full screen mode. Um, I know that's going to make it harder for you guys to see which layer I'm working on. Um, but I am just working on the um, channel mask, uh, sorry, the layer mask um, for layer one. So. I'm just going to pull in the sky across the top a little bit. I'm going to lower my opacity on my brush, so I'm now down to 20%. I was working with it um, on 50% before. 
just going to paint in a little bit more in here. You can see that I'm able to just almost click it in. I'm not using um, my Wacom for this at the moment. I'm just really painting in with the mouse. Um, I'd recommend a Wacom, but if you don't have it, that's okay. So this is what my mask looks like right now. So you can see the areas where I'm pulling in the sky. And this is what the image looked like before. So now that um, I have the mountains in and they're looking pretty good, um, I have the um, the sky and I'm going to process again. I'll come out of full screen mode just so that you can see a little bit easier. So I'm going to reopen this. Again it will open in camera raw. I'm going to set it back to the camera raw defaults. Now I'm looking at this area here. So with this, I actually want to brighten it a little bit. I do want to increase the contrast. I'm going to go just a little bit lower on the exposure. Again, I want to bring up the clarity and the vibrance, but I'm actually going to change some things again in the HSL grayscale. So this has a lot of yellow in it. You can see I can desaturate the yellow, so I could make this look more wintry, or I can add in um, some more green to bring the, the greens up. So I can also adjust the luminance. The luminance is basically like a brightness contrast setting that you can apply to certain colors. So you can see if I move the yellows all the way to the right, it's going to lighten it move it all the way to the left it's going to darken it so if you just want to lighten or darken some tones along the color spectrum you can use your luminance setting this time we're going to take a look at hue if i wanted to make this a little bit warmer a little bit more red i would adjust the yellows you can see i can take them pretty much all the way to a very reddish color i don't want to do that but i do want to warm them up a little bit Likewise with the greens, I can also adjust them if I wanted to go for a, a greener green or a yellowier green. Um, I can bring those into the spectrum that I want on here. Um, back in the basic tab, you can also adjust the temperature. It was shot on a pretty cold day. Um, you can see that it's wintry, a little bit of a storm. So I can adjust the temperature to either cool it down or warm it up. Um, so that is also an option. You can also add a tint to it, which again will cool it down or warm it up, depending on where you want to go with that. Um, so once you've added in the settings that you want, um, I'm just increasing the vibrance a little bit, I can open the image. And again, I'm going to paste it on top of our image that we're working on. Now this time, because I'm only bringing through this part, I'm actually going to add a hide all layer mask. So on here you'll see the layer mask was white. This is called a reveal all. If you think of layer masks as being about light and dark, so anything that's light you can see what's there. Anything that's dark is going to hide what's there. So the black hides, the white reveals. So to add a hide all layer mask, I can hold down the option key and click on the add layer mask button. I know some of you are using PCs, so um, that would be the Alt key, I think. But you can also just go to your layer menu, then layer mask, hide all. And that will add that black layer mask in there. So now I have most of the image. And again, I'm using a low opacity brush. I have it set to 20%. I need to now paint with white because I'm painting on a black layer mask. And I can just start pulling through some of the lightness in the ground. I don't need to pull it back to what I processed it to. Um, I'm able to paint in just a little bit. So again, um, what I'm doing by having it on 20% opacity, I'm painting in with grey so I can reveal some areas more than others. So if I particularly wanted um, this little bit of ground here to be much lighter in comparison to the rest of it, I can do that.
so I don't have to paint everything in equally. And I would just probably lighten up this area on the hills a little bit. And I should really be in full screen mode because I know I can't see the edges of my image. In fact, if I go into full screen mode, you'll see it's a little bit dark around the edges because I haven't painted in here. So I'll just go and bring that back in and up around here too. And so this is what my mask looks like. There's very few areas where I've come back in solid white. So now I'm going to come back out of full screen mode. I'm going to process one last time, and that's just to bring this back to its original. And I'm going to put that on the background layer so you can see what a change the processing has made. So I've just set it back to its default. So in order to put this on the background, in fact, I can actually just leave it on the foreground. So this was my original, and this is how I processed it. So this is um, a technique where you process the image multiple times so that you can bring in different color balances. I was able to add in reds in here, more blue in here. I could change this to um, a cooler color, which I did. I can bring in detail up here. This will be very difficult to achieve by only processing the image once. It's like a form of HDR, but you're manually processing it to bring in um, each exposure. Uh, somebody asked me at the beginning of the course um, how, how I actually do these kind of images, and this is how I do it. It's basically by processing for my foreground, my midground, and my sky. Sometimes it's just as simple as processing three times for shadows, midtones, and highlights, and so that I can literally paint in the exposure where I want it to be. It's not dissimilar to darkroom techniques where people dodged and burned images for hours at a time so that they could control each part of the exposure, um, and that's what I'm doing here.